All right, we will admit everyone. Thank you. And everyone is admitted. Thank you. So welcome everyone to the Livingston Commission meeting on April 5th, 2022. Roll call, please. Chair Nunes. Here. Vice Chair Kale. Here. Commissioner Friedman. Here. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Lyons. Here. All right, next up on the agenda is general public comment. So individuals are reminded that public comments should be limited to the items over which a city commission has supervision, control jurisdiction, or advisory power. If you're here to leave general public comment, please raise your hand or put your name in the chat and make sure to start by sharing your name and your address. Justin Cameron. Hello, everybody. My name is Justin Cameron. I live at 522 North I Street. Um, I wanted to comment today uh, on the, uh, the homelessness situation in Livingston. Um, I have been in direct contact with it for the last six months and have been watching it get um, quite a bit worse. Um, I've seen it kind of wane and wax over the years, but this year it's it's definitely uh, noticeably worse, and there's not being uh, there's not a lot being done to to fix it at the moment. And so I wanted to bring in to everyone's attention the um, the evidence based practices that have helped other communities like ours deal with this problem of chronic homelessness. And um, I think that's what we experience a lot of right now is individuals who have been homeless more than a year or over the last three years have, have experienced more than two episodes of homelessness. Um, the, that, that practice is permanent supportive housing. Um, so that uh, requires funding from uh, organizations like HUD and some others. And what that is, is a housing assistance where individuals do pay a portion of their rent, but they're also given wraparound supportive services. And uh, that looks like having a case manager that's checking in with them on a weekly basis, working with uh, mental health services and uh, medical health services as they um, desire. Um, but I'm noticing that when I talk to some of these folks that have fit these criteria of chronic homelessness, they are, uh, a lot of them aren't really seeking services because they're, once they get into housing, they kind of get dropped off the map and no one's really following up with them. And so I would like, um, honestly, would like to see the city pursue funding for permanent supportive housing. Um, and work with the nonprofit organizations that do this work in housing and mental health and community health um, to kind of, if we put these interventions in place now, uh, we can fix this problem before it gets too bad and before um, we start losing people uh, next winter. We didn't lose anybody this winter, um, thankfully, uh, the, due to exposure, but uh, it's not guaranteed next winter. Um, even though we have the warming center, it's, 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 a, it's not a solution if we don't have those permanent supportive housing things in place. So I just wanted to, to bring that to this, the commission's attention. And I, I would like to see that being something that's more of the conversation. I know that's not the conversation that's going on in the park housing, um, housing, housing alliance right now. Um, and I would like to see that become something that we start talking about to prevent this from becoming something that we can't get ahead of anymore. So thank you. Thank you, Justin. And next on our list is Tim Stevens. Hi folks, Tim Stevens here um, at, from 315 North 3rd. Um, thanks for the opportunity to 
visit with you. I just wanted to raise uh, uh, an issue that's sort of been on my mind for, for quite a while, and that is I've, I've been um, commuting to work by foot uh, since 2004 from the north side over to my office, which is on Main Street. And um, every day I cross at the after the underpass at uh, Park and Main, and um, therefore every day I sort of take my life into my own hands. <laughs> um, and um, I, the the traffic's just getting worse, and and I, and I I think that there is a there is a um, quick and elegant solution for the issue of the risk that that is posed to pedestrians um, crossing Park Street uh, at at Maine, and that is having the the strobed intersection like they have in some places in in Bozeman, like near campus, where you press a button, you walk across the street, and the lights are strobing and people pay attention because people aren't paying attention if you're just standing there. Um, I've seen plenty of times when people have their phones balanced on their steering wheel and they're texting um, while they're driving. And I've seen that plenty and they drive right by. And the only way I cross that street, and I'm a big dude and I usually have three dogs with me, so I'm pretty obvious. Um, the, the, only, the only way I'll cross is if I make eye contact with the, with the people driving and they, and they give me the nod and they stop. Um, I worry about, about kids um, coming over, especially if we're trying to make our community more walkable. And certainly the city has done a laudable job uh, uh, dealing with the snow and the underpass. Um, but that doesn't help if, if parents are afraid to send their kids across from the north side. Uh, having raised three kids um, on the north side, I, I can tell you that we were one of many who chose to drive our kids um, to school as opposed to send them via foot or via bike across that intersection. And um, I, you know, I'm your, I'm your case example of having to done this commute for almost 20 years now. And um, it's not getting better. And like I said, the solution is pretty obvious and I don't think it's very costly. And I would hope that you could find something like in the Safe Routes to Schools money, um, but um, there is an elegant solution and this one you could, you could, have, you could have cleared up, but it's a, it's a glaring safety issue. And, um, and I worry that it's simply a matter of time before somebody gets nailed at that intersection by, by a driver who's not paying attention. So anyways, I hope you'll, you'll consider this as, as a, as a problem that has a solution and the solution is not, does not cost millions of dollars. Um, so hopefully uh, this will be something that, that we can, we can follow up with. So that's about all I had, but thanks for your time. Thank you, Tim. I just want to remind the public that this is a really formal process, the public comment. So you won't see the commission deliberate on the things that you're bringing up, but we're hearing you and we'll keep them in mind for future agendas. So thank you, Tim. And next up is Leslie Feigl. Good evening, commissioners. Um, thank you for uh, giving me just a few moments of your time this evening. Um, I do wanted to bring up uh, two items. One is that um, we are not on the commission agenda for this evening. On February 28th, I turned in, so this is more of a notation. Um, I turned in uh, the application for the car show on February 28th. And um, we have yet to get on the commission. It simply is stating that we were looking for the annual reduction in fees. Um, the fees, I believe, were just reducing by $300. It was very minimal, like it always is. And also to be approved for the car show closure on June 4th. Um, the second one uh, that we turned in on March 15th for the parade um, was turned in uh, to both the city commission office as well as um, Maggie Tarr, it was very unclear where we turn these in at this point. Um, I did call the office and talk to a gentleman over there at Maggie Tarr's office that said that they go over there, uh, but so still um, does the special events. So anyway, I made two copies, turn them in at both locations. Um, and again, the parade is not the formal letter to you as the commissioners um, to be uh, in front of you for a re fee reduction, the annual fee reduction, again, um, was not put on to tonight's commission meeting. And this was in plenty of time um, over three weeks ago, and the other one was over a month ago. And so I wanted to make a notation of that. Um, when I did talk with Faith, um, finally, I believe it was Friday, um, Thursday or Friday, she had told me that sometime last year that the processes were changed, but I printed out, I have the page, which is uh, actually a screenshot of the city's homepage, um, which actually puts on their public um, request to be on the agenda. And it has the timeline on here. 
And then I looked at my computer tonight and the home page is now changed. So um, I simply want to know if we're allowed to close for the uh, car show and for the parade and to be in front of you as commissioners for the annual fee reduction. So I'm hoping we will be on the next agenda. And I thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you, Leslie. Are there any other people that want to leave general public comment? I don't see any hands raised and I don't see any more names in the chat. All right, so we'll move on to the next agenda item. So we have three consent items this evening. Uh, commissioners, are there any that you want pulled from the agenda to discuss, or I'm looking for a motion? Here, Newt. Vice Chair Kiel. Uh, can we pull consent item B? I just have a question. Sure. So do we have a motion on items A and C? Make a motion to approve items, uh, consent items A and C. Second. So motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman to approve consent items A and C. Roll call, please. Chair Nunes. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Um, Vice Chair Kale, did you want to? share or speak to consent item B. I did. Um, I just had a, a question on page 15 of the payment approval report, claims approved. Can, Michael or someone, can you just tell me what, what the payment of the Livingston Daycare LLC parking lease is? So Michael, do you see that on the bottom of page 15? I, I do. That's the uh, city parking lot on um, on Lewis, Lewis and Second. Okay. So the city leases that parking lot and then leases the lots out to the public. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, commissioners, about consent item B? Okay. We're ready for a motion for consent item B. I need to make a motion uh, to. Approve consent item B. Second. So motion by Kale, second by Friedman. Roll call, please. Go ahead. Chair Nunes. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. So next up, we have two proclamations. The first proclamation is National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. So your patience while I read. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that requires law enforcement, fire, or emergency medical services, and the public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact to these citizens needing those services. Whereas when an emergency does occur, the prompt response of law enforcement officers firefighters and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of all of our law enforcement officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who provide the Livingston Park County 911 Dispatch Center with information. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our law enforcement officers and firefighters, by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Livingston Park County 911 Dispatch Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding and professionalism during performance of their job in the past year. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Melissa Newts, Chair of City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, do hereby declare the week of April 10 through 16, 
2022 to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Livingston, Montana, in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and all of our citizens safe. Commissioners, do any of you have anything you want to say before I read the next proclamation? I think this is a, I just want to say, I think this is a great proclamation and these are important staff people that provide a really important service to our city. And it's great that they always answer when we call. <laughs> um, if you've ever been in this situation where you've needed help or there's been an emergency, it's just really great that we have such helpful, calm um, people working in dispatch, really. I can think of times where trees have fallen on large objects in my street, as I'm sure it happens in yours. And that's when I most often have to call them, but. All right. Moving yeah, I'd like, to, the... I'd like to give a shout out to Peggy, Peggy Glass, who heads up the 911 Communication Center and, uh, and her, her staff, um, her joy to work with and uh, um, definitely do a proclamation like this. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. All right, I'm gonna go move into the next proclamation. So this is um, proclamation of the Livingston City Commission in support of the citizens of Ukraine. Whereas Ukraine has been a sovereign and independent nation since August 24th, 1991, upon its withdrawal from the collapsing former Soviet Union. And whereas Ukraine is the second largest European nation by land mass and is home to more than 41 million proud Ukrainian citizens with their own national history and culture. And whereas the United States relationship with Ukraine serves as a cornerstone for security, democracy, and human rights in Ukraine and the broader region, and whereas on February 24th, 2022, at the direction of President Vladimir Putin, Russian forces began an unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in violation of international law. And whereas Russian aggression in this invasion and the annexation of Crimea have resulted in over 14,000 Ukrainian deaths. And now therefore be it resolved, the elected members of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, do hereby condemn this violence and the threats to innocent civilians in Ukraine and stand in support of the citizens of Ukraine and their sovereignty. Commissioners, did you have anything that you wanted to say in response to that proclamation? Uh, Chair Newt, I would just say I was glad to see that proclamation and um, I've been heartened by so much uh, support that's come actually out of our community that has gone to Ukraine in the last month. Um, so that's been lovely to see from our community. So thank you. Thanks, Vice Chair Kill. Thanks to staff who helped us write that proclamation also. All right. So moving on to scheduled public comment. We have the 2021 Livingston Zoning Commission annual report presented by Jim Berg. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is a, the next in the line of annual reports from the boards and commissions. And with that, I will turn it over to the chair, Jim, for his report. Thank you, Mr. Cardos. Uh, thank you, Chairman Newts and the rest of the commission. Uh, it's. I guess I would say it's been a pleasure to uh, serve on the Zoning Commission in the past year. It seems like we've gotten quite a lot accomplished. Uh, you have a copy of the report that I provided at the end of the last year. Uh, looks like we had seven uh, zoning map amendments that we uh, discussed and made recommendations on to the City Commission and eight zoning text amendments uh, that we uh, looked through very carefully and, and sent your way. Um, so um, I, I guess at this point, I would say a lot of the uh, credit for that goes to Matthew Menard, who we're very sorry to see go, but he was an exceptional staff member, very productive and helped us uh, do our jobs. Um, uh, going forward, I guess I had a question. Uh, we've had a 
uh, uh, quite a few uh, zoning annexations recently, and I'm and I'm not up to date on whether there are any more of those coming down the pike in terms of us uh, making our plans for the upcoming months. Um, and uh, on our agenda, uh, we have to uh, look at the gateway overlay map and text amendment issue, which is a pretty complicated um, issue to look at. Um, we also need to go through the zone the growth policy uh, sections that are relevant to zoning and to make sure that any future work that we do um, uh, um, is done in line with the growth policy. And um, I don't know. And beyond that, I think I just wanted to kind of um, say briefly that um, I would, I sort of feel the need at this point because we've accomplished a uh, quite a lot of fairly technical and detailed work that it's probably time to step back and, 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 and look in a broad sense at where the city is and where we as a zoning commission can be most effective. Uh, we've got a growth policy that's new that uh, had a huge amount of public con uh, con contributions to that uh, we can certainly use, um, but we've got some serious problems in the town too that uh, I'm not sure are being addressed. Um, so I, I just want to kind of throw these out for you. And so in the future, maybe we can, we can have some discussions between the zoning commission and the city commission. Uh, the, the big problems that I see in Livingston at this point are a, a question of living wage. Um, uh, secondly, affordable housing. Um, I, I've been told that average rents now are 15 to $1,700 a month, which is quite extraordinary. Um, I think pro traffic on Park Street and the Fifth Street Crossing is a problem that um, just won't go away. Uh, and, and then finally, um, as our town grows and as um, uh, the, the new replaces the old, um, I, I would like to see what we could do to, to, to make the town as much a community as possible. And we're, we are trying to um, work with the idea of the 15 minute radius, uh, which is a town planning concept where um, you could certainly walk to essential services uh, from wherever you live. And that certainly was where Livingston was um, up until the 1950s. Um, there used to be, for instance, uh, eight or nine grocery stores in town. Um, and you could certainly from downtown walk uh, to any house in town within 15 minutes. And that's, that's no longer true. Um, so I, I think one of the things we are trying to do is on the outskirts of town, uh, on the east end, on the northwest end, especially try to promote and um, uh, mark more mixed use um, designations such that we can start to see some um, uh, lo local businesses develop in those areas so that people can people can stay more in their areas and we don't we don't uh, plug up Park Street any more than we have. Um, and then finally, the one thing I would just like to suggest to you, uh, during the growth policy um, process, we had a meeting at the library um, and it was decided at that time, it was, a, it was had members of the zoning commission, well, I think all of the uh, public uh, committees were there to make recommendations and it was decided at that point that that was a good format. And so I would like to promote the idea that we need to have at least a one or two joint meetings between zoning and planning, uh, that maybe the city commission and the, and the staff uh, and maybe some of the other um, committees such as parks and trails. So we can compare notes, uh, we can see where we're all going, what our priorities are and see how our efforts uh, can be unified and coordinated uh, to advance the goals and the growth policy. So I'd like to throw that one out for your consideration. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to. Yeah. 
Thanks, Jim. I wanted to get clarification. So you listed about five things at the end that weren't in the report. Were those things that were from the zoning commission that you all voted on? The, or is that the, just the individual feedback? The, the, the discussion I had at the end was just for myself personally. Okay. I just yep. wanted to get clarification. So yes. Yeah. Um, so thanks for your feedback. The some of the things you named at the very end, just to clarify, are not necessarily directly zoning commission topics. Some right. of them would be commission at large or um, some of the city departments or potentially other boards. So thanks for thanks for bringing them up. I just wanted to make I just wanted to make it clear that it's. Um, that some of them aren't zoning commission. Right, that's so exactly zoning. right. They're, okay. they're, bit, they're broader issues that that's why okay. I was suggesting a, a broader meeting. Okay, thank you. And then commissioners, do any of you have questions for Jim about the um, zoning commission yearly report? I'll just weigh in real quick. Um, and thank you for all the hard work you've done this this past year, Jim, and, um, and uh, zoning commission. Um, you put a lot out there. Thank you. I yield. Other commissioners? Um, if I may, Chair Newts, I, I, I think that a meeting between the planning board, as a member of the planning board myself, um, and the zoning commission, I think that's a great idea. I see the zoning commission as kind of uh, an implementer of the planning board's vision. Um, and so I think having, uh, having an understanding between those two groups would be, is critical. And I think that, so I think a, a meeting between the, um, the board and the commission is, is a great idea, which I would support as a commissioner and as a planning board member. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Um, the other thing, or any other commissioners, does anyone else have anything that they want to add or ask? Okay, the other thing I wanted to um, say too is thank you, Jim. Um, it's been a good year for the Zoning Commission and the Commission, we've gotten a lot of work done. I would look to the um, strategic plan that's where the list of annexations have come from over the past year or two that we've been working on them. And we're also working to update the strategic plan. We're in the beginning stages of it, but that's where I would expect to see some of these really high priorities, big picture things that you were mentioning would happen in the strategic plan. So um, we're just at the beginning stages. If you look at the action items for tonight, we're talking about putting together the committee. Um, to go over the guiding, the guiding principles and values of the strategic plan. And then the actual meat of it will get done after that. So that is in the works and we're working on it. In the meantime, I would encourage you to reach out to the city manager to see what other things are coming up. And I'm sure he'll be in communication with the board and in, in the interim until we have a new planner. Thank you so much. All right, next on the agenda are um, public hearings, if we're ready to move into the public hearing portion. And I wanted to give the city attorney a minute to pull up some language we have around public hearings. And I need to get something taken care of in my immediate office. So if we could take five minutes and come back, that would be great. Um, so. Faith, if you could start a timer, that would be fantastic. And I'll see you all in five minutes. Wait for the report. All right. So uh, Courtney, were you able to grab that language on public hearings? Thank you. Did you want to drop that in the chat and I'll read it out loud? Uh, we'll just share it on the screen so everybody can see it and you can read it from there if that's okay. That's wonderful, thank you. 
So public hearings are intended to take testimony and evidence related to the issue notice on the agenda. While the commission is not bound by the strict rules of evidence, the commission may exclude irrelevant, immaterial, incompetent, or unduly repetitious comments, testimony, or evidence. Proponents or opponents, their agents or attorneys may submit petitions and written comments during or prior to the closing of the hearing. And the same shall be entered by reference into the minutes. Thank you. So we have three public hearings. Three public hearings. Hear an echo. Thank you. So public hearing on ordinance number 3027 entitled an ordinance of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, amending section 30.13 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled official zoning map of the city of Livingston by zoning parcels generally known as 26 Fleshman Creek Road and legally described as COS 543 in section 14 Township 2 South, range 9 East as medium density residential. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is a continuation of zoning the parcels that we annexed earlier in, uh, in, the, in the process. So this one is the one parcel that is directly um, next to the armory to the south there, and then is surrounded by uh, R2 residential to the east, west, and north. Um, this did, uh, this was annexed back in September of 21. Um, and now that it's fully annexed, we are looking at the zoning participation or the zoning um, classification. So in this case, the staff recommendation is for R2, which is the same as the surrounding um, property except for the public where the armory is. Uh, and reading through the staff report that Matthew prepared, um, you can see in this case, in the extraterritorial ju jurisdiction flum, this was uh, shown as um, pastoral and open space, uh, which is a designation that we use outside the city. That is not something we use inside the city. So once it was annexed, we needed to look at the next uh, most appropriate zoning for it. Uh, in this case, R2 is going to be most consistent with what is already there. Um, again, this is a fairly small parcel. There's no significant effects of um, the zoning in this case. It does meet the zoning ordinances as far as the need for uh, security for safety from fire and other dangers. Uh, it, it promotes uh, air and light um, and does have adequate provisions of transportation, water, sewer, schools, parks, and all the other public requirements. Um, it was also analyzed for its uh, compliance with the spot zoning criteria. It is not spot zoning in this case as we are zoning it in um, the same way as a surrounding property. Uh, and finally, this was seen by the zoning commission back in February. Uh, they did unanimously approve um, recommending R2 to the city commission. Uh, there were some concerns raised about traffic for this particular piece, although not outside the city, um, although it was already completely surrounded by the city. Obviously any development on the north side of town will add to traffic. Um, Matthew calculated that if at the max density, at the type of housing that would create the most traffic, um, 240 trips per day could be generated from that property. Obviously, it would have to be developed considerably differently than the configuration it's in right now, uh, but that would be the most theoretical possible traffic that that parcel could produce. So the staff recommendation um, is to zone this parcel R2 and make it compatible with the rest of the surrounding properties. Surrounding. Thank you, Mr. Carters. Um, commissioners, do you have any clarifying questions before we open the public hearing? Commissioner Lyons. Thank you, Chair Newts. Um, Mr. Cardos, on page 34, um, I believe there is a mistake that we identified in a previous meeting. Um, the proposed R2 designation allows for anything from single family home to multi-unit buildings. I think that's a description of R3 zoning. Um, and again, I think we, we brought up that issue uh, at a previous meeting. Um, so if we're going to adopt, if we're going to adopt this resolution, we'll have to make an amendment to that effect. And that's it. Thank you. Other commissioners?
All right, so let us open this public hearing. This public hearing is now open. If you wanna um, give testimony for this agenda item, please put your name in the chat or raise your hand. And just remember when you introduce yourself to say your name and address. I'm looking and I don't see any hands up or anything in the chat. So this public hearing is closed. Um, and now we'll move it back to the commission. So let's start with a motion and a second before we discuss it. So I'll entertain a motion for ordinance number 3027. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 3027. Second. So motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Commissioners, discussion on ordinance 3027. Commissioner Lyons. Shouldn't we amend the, the ordinance to include the correct description of R2 zoning? Um, so in the ordinance itself, this is R2, but I think we could. Oh, it's oh, the my, staff. Sorry, my mistake. It's the staff report. So that. But that sometimes, doesn't... but sometimes we do need to amend the staff report or findings of fact. So I want to make sure, because um, this is under the proposed findings of fact. So we can, I believe, I'll ask Mr. Cardus um, to give his input and recommendations on how to proceed with if we disagree with the findings of fact. Thanks for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Cardus. Um, because this is the last reading of the ordinance, there's really nowhere to correct it because the staff report doesn't get filed with the ordinance. It's just the ordinance itself that gets filed. Um, and the staff report doesn't appear in the, the minutes either, so it wouldn't be a correction to the minutes. Uh, because the recording is the official minutes of the, of the meeting, it'll be on record that that's a correction that is needed if people review the meeting. But other than that, there's nowhere this information will appear um, once this meeting is complete. So there's not anything to correct if that makes sense. Like there's nothing that goes forward that is, that is kept. Okay, thank you. I know there's, and maybe it's with um, subdivision reviews where we amend findings of fact, or maybe if it's we disagree with the staff report, we amend findings of facts. Um, or if we, I mean, not the staff report, if we disagree with the overall recommendation. But I think that's, that's uh, helpful. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons for remembering that and getting it on the record. Did you have anything else, Commissioner Lyons, you still have the floor? He looks frozen on my screen. Is he frozen for other people? Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll just give him a second. Um, okay. I'm gonna assume he's gonna come back. When he comes back, I'll give him a chance to have the floor again. Other commissioners? Does anyone else have comments? Any, any indication that Commissioner Lyons is trying to rejoin? Okay, and then we'll just move forward and hope that he can rejoin. So we have a motion on the table um, to approve ordinance 3027 in a second. No other comments? Oh, here he's back. Welcome back. Commissioner Lyons, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we before we move to a vote? No, sorry about that. My C computer died. I'm uh, but I'm back. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to thank you for getting it on the record and bringing that up. 
All right, so we're ready for roll call, please. Chair News? Four. Vice Chair Kale? Four. Four. Commissioner Friedman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. Motion passes. Next up is another public hearing. It's on ordinance number 3028 entitled an ordinance of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, amending section 30.13 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled official zoning map of the city of Livingston by zoning parcels generally known as 25 Loves Lane and legally described as lot 5A of the Lauren Minor subdivision in section 23 township 2 south range 9 east as high density residential. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is the zoning of the 25 Loves Lane property that was annexed under um, petition from the landowner. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll try and get the map up here in just a second. Uh, um, the surrounding areas are zoned R3. Uh, in the ETJ Flum, this was shown as medium density residential. Uh, so that is consistent moving forward. Uh, again, Matthew has gone through the 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 parts of the MCA that are required for uh, zoning, um, looking at the growth policy. Um, it does allow for higher density and wider land use in this area. It does encourage residential developments, um, serving residents within walking distance. Um, specifically, this is probably one of the easiest walking distances to grocery stores that we have in town. Um, technically, it does extend the city boundaries, but this is in an area that is already fairly well developed and is tied directly to some of the higher density developments in the city. Um, so while not technically infill, it is an area that is already seen development and is easily developed. Um, it is a, a route uh, near transit routes as far as uh, Loves Lane being able to handle quite a bit of traffic as well as Park Street and does promote a mix of housing within the neighborhood. Uh, it does meet all of the safety requirements as far as fire, light, and general welfare, um, and does have adequate uh, provisions of transportation, water, sewer, schools, parks, and other public requirements. Um, other than that, again, it's not spot zoning as it is being continuation of the zoning that's already here. Again, this was seen by the Zoning Commission on February 8th and unanimously recommended um, to to present you with an R3 zoning recommendation. Uh, again, traffic and parking were concerns. Um, there will most likely be internal parking, but that is unknown at this point as this is just the zoning portion and not the development portion. Uh, but that would be something that we would work on when we did the design review process. Again, the staff recommendation is to zone this R3 and allow it to develop at that density. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any clarifying questions before I open the public hearing? Seeing none, this public hearing is open. So if you are here to give comment on ordinance 3028, please put your name in the chat or raise your hand, come off mute and state your name and address for the record when you're called upon. Patricia Graybo. Patricia, you can come off mute and give public comment on this item. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Patricia Grabo, 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston, Montana. Um, I was on the city commission when we initially um, developed this property one of the criterion we used was we were only going to go uh, above two stories on the one building. And the reason, and then the developer promised us that he would save those gorgeous trees that he then took down. Uh, and that was one of the, one of the trade-offs we, we had with him. And another trade-off was that he would keep the homestead that was originally there, um, and of course he didn't. And there was a, a tremendous lawsuit with the city regarding the water and sewer that came out of this um, 
this property and in my judgment, the city was remiss in the way they handled the water and sewer line and the initial uh, investment by a private investor. Patricia, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to keep your comments to the property that we're talking about. The one I am, I am, I am. I we're talking okay, about the, the one idea that's... was there would be only one piece parcel of property out there that would be three stories high. There would only the rest would be two stories high, and that would include the property we're talking about. Um, what I'm saying is, if you go back to the archives on this, you will find that the owner did not keep his word on the criterion that the, the city commission set at the time. And I personally think it is getting ugly out there. You have this lovely rural area and it doesn't coordinate at all with the kind of housing that's going out there. And I think this city commission ought to step back and take a look um, at what, what they're doing to what is uh, should be a mixed use kind of area and it's not happening. It's it's doing what housing did in inner cities and I and I object to it. I, I object to the fact that the owner did not live up to his word to the city and I object to the kind of um, kind of mass development that's occurring out there. End of comment. Thank you. Uh, are there, is there anybody else that wants to give public comment on ordinance 3028? Um, if I could, Chris Laren. Sorry, I didn't yeah. know how to raise my hand. No, that's fine. It happens. <clears throat> if you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, so Chris Laren, uh, 414 North 16th Avenue, Bozeman, Montana. I'm the uh, property owner for 25 Loves Lane. So. I just wanted to make it clear for the record that I didn't, I haven't made any agreements. I, I own this property. There were no previous agreements when I purchased the property. So I'm not sure. And it's not developed at this point. So there's an existing house, which will remain, but um, yeah. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to give public comment on ordinance 3028? All right, I don't see any hands up or anything in the chat. So this public hearing is closed. And now we will move it back to the commission and we can start with um, a motion before we go into commission deliberation. So commissioners, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 3028. Second. So a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Commissioners, who would like to speak first? Um, I'll just quickly make the comment that we in in voting to approve a specific zoning we're not approving any specific development um and the development review process is separate from the zoning process um, as someone who contributed to <clears throat> the growth policy i think that matthew did a good job of explaining how our three zoning here um, comports with the overall vision of the growth policy. Um, although this this specific parcel was in the, was identified in the future land use map because at the time of growth policy it was not within the city limits and now it is um, and therefore it needs to be zoned. And I think that that zoning it at um, R3 is consistent again with the overall vision of the growth policy, which is um, infill development to avoid urban sprawl. Uh, this is a, a great um, strategic location for infill development because the impacts of higher density here 
are much uh, reduced compared to other places that um, that could happen in the city. Um, the 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 um, report from Matthew describes how uh, a lot of trips could be made with alternative modes like walking and transit. Um, I think that that is a good point. It and it means that there's going to be a smaller impact of higher density residential here than there would be in other places. A much smaller impact um, than if that type of if that growth were to be distributed either throughout the city or in um, in the surrounding area. So great example of, of infill, great example of, of following the vision of, of the growth policy and and therefore receive the this zoning change receives my full endorsement. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Other commissioners? Vice Chair Commissioner, yeah. thank you, or Chair News, thanks. Um, I'm just going to agree with Tori and just also stress the amount how badly we need additional housing in our community. And this is going to give us some other options for housing for folks. Um, and to be able to have some denser development in town, particularly where the infrastructure fits, which this does, um, seems like a, a win for all of us. Um, and, and I'm just going to agree with uh, Commissioner Lyons on this one. So thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Kale. Other commissioners, Friedman or Schwartz, do you have any comments you want to make? No? Okay. I have, since it is a public hearing, I do want to ask an evidence question, Mr. Cardus. Um, since the public did bring up that there was a previous agreement and the property owner said no, have you seen any evidence that there's a previous agreement with this property owner and the city regarding development? No, I this property seen. wasn't, I'm sorry. Uh, so I haven't seen anything, thank you. What yeah, no, there seen? wasn't anything because this property was not in the city. So there obviously couldn't have been an agreement between the city and this property um, until we annexed it just a couple of months ago. So um, there was no agreement with this owner. And I, honestly, I haven't seen any evidence that there was an agreement with the flats at Yellowstone Bend, which I think is the property that was being referenced next door. Um, there's no official agreement there either. There was from the beginning a full um, uh, initial plat that included all the buildings that are there currently. So from the very beginning, that was intended as a full build, build out. Okay, thank you for that. All right, I don't have any other questions. Um, if we're ready, we can move to a vote. Commissioners, you ready? All right, thank you. Roll call, please. Chair News. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Our third and final public hearing for this evening. It's a public hearing on ordinance number 3029 entitled an ordinance of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana amending section 30.13 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled Official Zoning Map of the City of Livingston by zoning parcels within the Montague subdivision north of Bennett Street, excluding Block 3, Lot 514 and Block 3 and a portion of Lots 22 through 26 and including the adjacent island in the Yellowstone River located in the northeastern quarter of Section 7 Township 2 South, Range 10 East as mixed use medium density residential and public as shown in exhibit A. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So again, this is a, a zoning action on newly annexed property. In this case, the Montague or Montag subdivision that's next to Green Acres. Um, I'm gonna show you two maps. One just to, again, to show what the staff recommended and then the zoning commission recommendation to you. Uh, so if you look on page 68 first, um, and I think it'll be a little easier to understand what you had to read there. Uh, so hold on just a second while we get that shared with you. Um, there you go. So the parcels they're talking about zone public is one is the island as stated. Uh, and then this area that's commonly referred to as Sackett Park, uh, which is dedicated to the city as a city park. So those two will be zoned um, public as is appropriate for um, any park land. 
Then in the bottom left-hand corner here under the orange, you can, or under the bright orange, you can see kind of the, the more harvest orange, I guess. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a color, color expert. So if you have a better color description, feel free. Um, maybe peachy orange. Uh, that was already zoned and in the city. So that's not included in this zoning action. So that's not a part of what we're doing tonight. Um, just the area in the blue outline. So in, again, in um, response to the growth policy, the staff originally recommended this entire area is mixed use. So um, Miles and Garnier all the way to the north up to Arbor and then over to Whiskey Creek Road would have been zoned mixed use. And then as you move out towards the river, again, the growth policy um, recommended lower densities as you approach the river. So we went from mixed use to R2 as it headed out towards the river. Um, so that was the original staff recommendation. And then if you, the next map, which is on page 69, um, in the zoning commission, the zoning commission thought that mixed use zoning was a little aggressive um, that far north and uh, felt it should maintain more of an R2 neighborhood feel all the way from uh, Green Acres across. So this is the uh, modified map that the zoning commission recommended. Again, the, the public zoning in the appropriate areas and then the pretty much the entire northern section being R2 with a little bit of wraparound right here and then the main north south. Uh, areas uh, here, again, mixed use. Uh, so again, that complies with the growth policy. There's no issues with that. And if you look through um, Matthew's staff uh, report, again, this was, um, some of it was shown as pastoral and open space in the ETJ flum, and some of it was shown as medium density residential, and we tried to reflect those accordingly in the map. Um, this will allow higher densities, and this Significantly is the, our first use of the mixed use zoning, which will be highly flexible in this area and allow some of that um, 15 minute concept that uh, Jim Berg was talking about as far as the planning effort of making things more walkable and more concentrated. This would be the first time that there's anything allowed in that area commercially that could could would allow them to have services closer to where they live, uh, especially as that is kind of out on the edge of Livingston um, and again on the north side of the tracks. Um, so that does encourage residential development uh, and commercial areas within walking distance. Um, again, while technically an extension of the city uh, borders, I think it's another example of, of good infill as far as areas that are already developed and already have services close to them. Um, it makes the extension of services much easier especially the proximity to the water treatment plant and the rest of public works, um, which are right next door to some of it. Um, and this one is a little different. It's the uh, a different objective that we don't have in the other ones, which is to protect riparian corridors and preserve the unique wildlife, uh, promote water quality and provide for public trails and open space. Uh, the Yellowstone River being bordering this is obviously a significant factor. And that's what played into reducing the density further out and um, designating a significant portion of that as public space. Um, that is a that area is actually a great area that absorbs a lot of the flooding uh, when we do have high waters in the Yellowstone uh, and makes a nice, um, some nice habitat there. Um, again, we're also protecting mobile home parks with codified ordinance. In this case, um, the zoning will continue to allow the mobile home parks that are there. Um, and as stated earlier, we are, the city in general is trying to work with mobile home parks to help them become uh, owner, uh, owner, owner owned, can you say owner owned? Uh, Self owned from the residents uh, to allow them to make sure that they don't get displaced through raising property values or, or rising rent. Um, no significant uh, problems as far as safety goes from fire, uh, public health and general welfare, Transportation, water, sewer, schools, parks, and other public requirements are uh, well met there. In fact, it adds a significant addition to the city park system. Well, not this particular one, but there is a, a since we added Green Acres Park next door, um, there is a significant city park available to the residents. Uh, so that's well done. Um, as far as motorized and non-motorized transportation goes, Yes, it is on the north side of the tracks and that can be a transportation problem, but mostly from that area, they will be utilizing the Bennett Street crossing, uh, which is one that has probably the most capacity of any of the crossings in town. Um, it's probably the least utilized. 
in town. So that is a, if, if growth on the north side is going to happen, utilizing that crossing is obviously the most um, advisable at this time. Um, spot zoning criteria is, again, it is not, no problems with spot zoning in that case. Um, and once more, this was seen by the Zoning Commission on February 8th. They again voted unanimously to recommend um, the approval as it came to you with the expanded R2 area um, with a little bit less mixed, mixed use in that area. And the staff does recommend going ahead with that map and approving it uh, as laid before you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, do you have any clarifying questions before we open the public hearing? I'll just, I'll jump in real quick and say in the ordinance um, that I read, the text says medium density residential, but there's that typo of R3. Um, medium density is actually R2. So when we, this is one, since it's in the text of the ordinance, we'd have to, I think, make sure to be clear that we're talking about R2, which Mr. Cardus just went over. Any other comments from the commission or clarifying questions before the public hearing? Okay, so I'm gonna open the public hearing for ordinance number 3029. So if you wanna give public comment on ordinance 3029, go ahead and um, raise your hand or put your name in the chat or come off mute if you need to. And just remember to state your name and your address for the record. Does anybody want to give public comment on this agenda item? I am not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Last chance, last call for public comment for this item. All right, so this public hearing is closed. And we'll take it back to the commission. And if y'all want to discuss this, let's make a motion before we deliberate. So any motions, and remember to amend if you are making a motion um, on this agenda item. I'll make a motion uh, to adopt ordinance number 3029 with the amendment that medium density residential should state R2, not R3. I'll second. A motion by Lyons and a second by Kale. And so now we're ready for commission deliberation. So commissioners, who would like to speak first? Commissioner Lyons. Uh, I appreciated uh, Mr. Berg's comments about um, having neighborhood centers um and i don't think he used that term but having having services um dispersed throughout our community such that um you know as our community grows we're not all traveling from different places to one place um, but rather receiving our services as close to home as possible um, i think that this novel uh, for our, our current zoning zoning map or zoning ordinance, this novel application of, of mixed use zoning is a, a great example of a way to accomplish that through land use regulation or allow for that, not necessarily accomplish that. As I say many times, um, what we're doing with, with land use regulation is, is allowing for uses, not stipulating that something's necessarily going to happen. Um, but with, with that clarification, allowing for the potential of commercial uses on the north side um, has the potential to make destinations available to, um, to residents of, of those neighborhoods um, that otherwise they have to cross the tracks to, um, to satisfy. So great, great example um, of mixed use zoning. I'm glad to see it there. I hope that <clears throat> there are opportunities going forward to apply a similar, similar model 
and um, I commend Matthew, who is no longer with us, and, and the Zoning Commission for um, for this appropriate application of mixed use zoning. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Other commissioners? Chair Newt. Vice Chair Kale. Um, I, I'm very encouraged to see us uh, first to, to have created the mixed use zoning as a new zoning regulation in the community and then actually now applying it. Um, so I'm encouraged and excited to see us sort of rolling this out and giving giving some neighborhoods some other opportunities that perhaps they wouldn't have had in the past. So I'm, I'm excited to see this, this moving forward. Thank you. Other commissioners, Friedman or Schwartz? I think, okay. I am, um, I agree with all the comments already said. I think it's nice to see the growth policy um, coming to fruition um, and being actualized through real code that can help us achieve our community goals. And I also appreciate some of the things um, that Mr. Carty shared, uh, some of the unique neighborhood characteristics and working to preserve those things as we move forward, um, like the Great Park in Green Acres um, as, an important, as an important part of this neighborhood, as well as um, this mobile home community and working towards resident owned. Um, and the city is thinking forward on all these things as this code gets updated. All right, so if there's no other comments, we'll move to a vote. One quick administrative thing, Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. Um, the actual ordinance is correct. It's just the divider page that's wrong. So if you look on page 83, it does say R2 and the entire ordinance says R2, but it, it was incorrect on the divider page. So there was no need to, there's no need to amend the ordinance. The ordinance is actually correct. Wonderful. Thank you for that clarification. That's great. Excellent. So we have a motion and we have a second. Second. All right, so we are ready for a vote. Roll call, please. Chair Nudes. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes, and we are done with public hearings for tonight. Next up, we have a resolution. It's resolution 5026, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, of its intent to discontinue and vacate a portion of the North 12th Street right of way adjacent to lots 1 through 16 and block 22 and lots 17 through 32 of block 23 of the Palace Edition. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this one is kind of a, uh, an odd vacation. Uh, it's different than normal anyway. Um, this has been assumed to have been true for many years. In fact, it is reflected on some of the deeds for the property. Uh, but when we did the research to go back, we couldn't find an actual ordinance that vacated this property. Um, so let me see if I can share with you the area we're looking at. Um, so if you look here in the center of the screen, uh, this very large parcel is the one that we're talking about. Um, 12th Street is this street north and south that comes down the middle. Um, this between 11th and 12th, this alley is not vacated and it is um, used by the neighbors. This alley between uh, 12th and 13th has been vacated and that, um, that paperwork is on file and it has been completely vacated. Uh, what we're talking about this evening would actually be where the right of way for 12th Street would be. Um, so it would be a continuation of 12th Street, which you can see goes directly through the, um, the center of the, of the building that has been just constructed there. And then we'll go down this hill uh, to hook to 12th Street, which comes out here by the bowling alley. So that's the area we're looking at. Um, again, this, this has been assumed to have been vacated for quite a while. Otherwise, a building permit would not have been issued. Uh, for this home. It was built originally as a home. It later became assisted living. Uh, so the staff recommendation is to go ahead with this vacation. Uh, if we were looking for um, trail connectors or other, other property in this areas, even if for some reason this, um, 
this fenced in yard and this building were to go away, this isn't actually a very um, conducive spot for a trail. We would probably use more of a Gallatin approach that would come down to 12th Street because if I can show this to you, let's see, that is some fairly steep terrain right there. Um, it would be difficult for anything to, to come through there. You can kind of see the, the buildings here. This is the 12th Street right away. So it would come right down through this area uh, and hook onto Front Street. Uh, so even without the building, this isn't an area that we'd really look to extend our trail system with. You can see that in the property directly to the west, the city also abandoned the street right of ways through that area to make it easier to build um, an internal configuration that's not on the black and, block and alley uh, configuration that the rest of the, the city is, um, which is why there's this internal road to kind of uh, mitigate the slope that's in that area and allow these houses to be added to the bottom. The same thing would have to be done if anything was to be built um, in this area. And so just for Clarification, while you see this fence line, this property actually goes down almost, so it would go down to where the, the Gallatin Street right of way would be, which is here. So this, this is part of the property as well. Um, but that is the, the area we are talking about. Uh, the reason this has come up at this point is because uh, the owners are looking to sell at this point. And obviously when they're doing a sale, they went through the deed inspection and this is just an item that happened to come up. So I think that is, is all I have for you, but I'm happy to answer any questions. First, I want to commend your use of Google Earth, finest use of Google Earth since I've been a commissioner at a public meeting. Um, also, so that that vacancy, the street, vacating the prop, the street goes all the way down then to Gallatin is what you're saying, through the, through the existing structure and down the slope. Okay. All right, other commissioners, do you have any clarifying questions before we? move towards deliberation. Okay. I see this. Commissioner Lyons, do you have a clarifying question? Yeah, could, is it possible for Mr. Cardos to bring up the trails and active transportation plan? Can we, can we look at that before it's been adopted? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Mr. Cardos? Sorry, I lost my mic behind trying to share my screen. Hold on. Um, I actually have it up. Let's see if I can. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, you already shared it. Right. It should be coming up. Um, there isn't. Let's see if we can go to the overall page on this one um, where it has all the trail systems. Well, while Mr. Carlos is bringing that up, I have one question, which is, does our decision, basically does, does our decision have to be all or nothing? Does it have to be vacate or not vacate? Um, I'm curious if there's any kind of agreement for future easement um, that could be made other than you can have this property forever and we will no longer have any claim to access or you may not have the property and we need you to tear the building down. Is there, is there any middle ground between those two outcomes? Um, usually, yeah. Go I'm ahead, sorry. Mr. Curtis. Um, usually there would be, and you can see here, uh, Faith did a wonderful job of bringing up the Trails and Master Transportation Plan. That is not an area that's looked at right now um, in the plan. Uh, while usually, yes, you could work with um, vacations while maintaining an easement. In this case, because the building is built across the entire uh, right-of-way, or what would be the right-of-way, that's right -of it's gonna be difficult yeah. because you'd actually be asking for an easement, easement through the middle of their building. Um, well, so I'm, I, I guess I'm not saying necessarily there, but could we, could we have an easement somewhere else on it? Because they own like two whole blocks there, right? So could we, yeah, could we, could we agree to some sort of easement somewhere else? Um, 
So the easy answer is yes. The hard answer is not as part of this item. The vacation's an all or nothing item. Uh, if we wanted to, to negotiate for an easement later, we certainly could do that. Again, I don't think there's a different alignment in there that we would necessarily desire to have. Um, the, the alley that's already there is, has a current right of way, so we could use that as necessary. The alley on the other end that's already been vacated runs into that development that was built on the bottom half of the hill. Um, and anything in the middle would have to go down that steep slope. Um, there are, hold on, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to try another, another screen share of my, my Google earth. Um, if we were looking for paths in that area, and we have talked about this in the past, the most likely areas we would look would actually be the extension of, uh, 11th street here, which would bring you down, um, all the way to front street near the, um, near the ditch or you could even do an extension of 9th Street, um, the 9th Street right away here, which you could hook into 9th Street down here. Uh, or even if you wanted to come from 10th or the alley, uh, you could do that as well. So while you could negotiate for an easement later, that's probably well down the list of areas we would actually look at if we wanted to do connectivity from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill in that area. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Thanks for thanks for that clarification. So just to clarify, it sounds like we could approve this, we could deny this, um, but we can't amend this. So if we wanted to enter into negotiation, we would need to say postpone this, and then on a future agenda, request that city staff negotiate for an alternate easement. Uh, yeah, I think that would probably be the way you'd want to go about it. Uh, you can negotiate at any time. Obviously, you don't have to pause if you don't want to. Um, but um, yes, if you were if you were looking to if there was a particular, I guess, alignment or easement that you were looking at on this property, that would probably be how you'd want to do it. Okay, thanks for the process response. Yeah, Commissioner Lyons. I would just add if so. Given given Mr. Cardo's explanation of uh, of um, other alternatives to connectivity in the area, um, I guess I don't necessarily. Uh, I, I guess I'm speaking like towards my vote right now, but I don't necessarily see this as a critical connection. On the other hand, I think that. I think that the precedent of giving away city land is a bad, it's a, it's a, it's a bad decision that's not uh, for, it's not future, um, it's not thinking about the future. As, as our city continues to grow, um, real estate prices as well we may or may not be in a bubble right now on, on the decade scale is going to continue to increase. Um, and so those assets that the city currently holds will be of more and more value. And if we're giving them away today, we're, we're not doing a, um, a service to the taxpayers. That being said, if, if we, if we do foresee ever wanting to have some sort of um, negotiation with the landowner, if we vacate that property today, we lose our our major bargaining chip in that negotiation. Um, so I, I, I said a couple somewhat countervailing points there, but that's that's those are all the things that I'm considering right now. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Lyons. So we have, I, we still need to open it to the public. So let's stick to um, clarifying questions for now. Do you have any others, Commissioners? Okay, uh, Matt, so yeah, go ahead, Mr. Carter. Um, there is one more piece of information I can show you that might be helpful, I think, to, before the public starts discussing, um, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Uh, let me find the right. So, and I think this is, this is the reason when you're talking about um, possibilities in the area. So this is cadastral that shows the current right of ways in the area. Um, so you can see that it not even cadastral shows the 12th street right of way, but you can see that we do hold the Gallatin street right of way 
the 11th street right away, the 10th street right of way, the 9th street right away. And all of those right of ways continue completely down to the bottom of the hill. Um, the alley doesn't go all the way to front street, but 10th street does hook through, 9th street does hook through, and 11th street does hook through all the way to front street. Um, and then the only other clarifying thing that I would say is um, nothing uh, uh, Commissioner Lyon said was incorrect, but do remember that we don't actually own any of the property as the city. None of it is actually city property. We just we just have a legal right of way on the private property. Thank you Thanks for that for clarification. Yeah, Mr. Cardos, uh, I'm I'm curious. I'm curious what the process of creating the cadastral is like. If if you could. If, if there's a, a way to understand, I mean, the cadastral shows that being vacated, uh, there's indications of it being vacated through the deed, but we can't find it. Um, we can't find an official record of it. Where did, wh how did the, the makers of that map come to decide that there, that, that had been vacated? I'm, I'm curious about that. So I don't think I can give you a uh, satisfying answer to that, but cadastral is a state program. It, it's run by the state of Montana and it's based off of um, clerk and recorders records. Um, however, we can't find a clerk and recorders record that shows the vacation of 12th street. That's what I think most of the indications are that it was intended to happen if it didn't happen. Um, but I can't, I can't prove that it happened. I, my guess is that that because it's on the deed uh, cadastral, that's where cadastral got the information is that the, the vacation was, was recorded on the deed. Anything else, Commissioner Lyons? No, thank you. And I apologize for, um, speaking out of turn earlier. No, this is the time to get, uh, clarifying questions answered. So I think that it's fine. Um, cause these are all process. It's good for the public to have all the information before we open it to the public. All right, seeing nothing else from the commission, I'm gonna open it to the public. So public, if you wanna give comment on resolution 5026, please raise your hand or put your name in the chat. And when you're called on, just remember to state your name and address for the record. Sarah Stans, you're up. Thanks, Commissioner Newts. Sarah Stans, 217 South E Street. Uh, we looked at, there was a recent abandonment on 11th Street with Rod Lee, who owns the bowling alley. And he owns a number of those parcels on 11th Street, um, kind of sandwiching on both sides. And so the abandonment would um, kind of help him join those two properties together. And he was looking at a at a land swap because he owns some of the parcels that are closer to Front Street um, so that the ditch, so that we could cross the ditch. So looking over on 11th Street and while there are easements like 11th, 10th and 9th to kind of come down, or right away, sorry, not easements to come down um, to Front Street, you do interact with the ditch. Um, and so getting across the ditch seemed to be, I don't know if there was some obstacles with being able to put a bridge over the ditch. But I didn't think that that was a possibility in, in some of our solutions when we were looking at that. So um, Rod and the Parks and Trails Committee at the time looked at some of the other ownership so that you could kind of, you can um, traverse across some of those really narrow properties. And then you would, you would hit, I think there's a Northwest Energy, there's a county property and trying to navigate. And so we walked that property really trying to come up with creative solutions, how you do get up on that hill. Um, and so it's not as easy as being able to, you know, just drop straight down perpendicular, um, to hit front street. And so, um, you, and yeah, being a little bit clever about if you are trying to connect up on top of, up, up on top of the hill, and then just on the drafts trails plans, some of those trails are, are, um, kind of more in, indicative of just wanting a connection, but not necessarily this is where the line should be. Um, but rather this is where the connections should be um, in trying to build that connectivity of an overall system. Um, so I don't have a comment like for or with, but it is a kind of a complex area. And 
um, you know, if Tori's saying that, you know, that there's an opportunity for us to get that connection at, at an easier spot, um, that'd be worth looking at because 11th street is kind of your only option there. And, um, unless you're doing some negotiating with some of the other landowners, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Next up, Brooke, Brooke Weimer, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Nope, you pronounced it correctly. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brooke Weimer, and I am at Two Willow Drive in Livingston. I am a realtor here in Livingston and actually acting on behalf of the owners of that property as they are in the process of selling that. Um, just wanted to, you know, bring up another side to this in the fact that um, the buyers are actually concerned about this going through simply because it has a, a big impact on the development of that property. So um, for instance, if this does not go through and there is an easement or that road easement is still in place, it's seriously going to impact the highest and best use of that property as far as development because it's going to impact where they're able to build on that. So if we're um, looking at property value and the housing crisis here, um, just something else to keep in mind as well is we will limit the amount of units that will be able to be placed on that property. Thank you, Brooke. You bet. Are there other folks here that wanna give public comment on resolution 5026? I don't see anything. I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any new names. Okay. So I'm closing it to public comment now and we'll move to commission. So commission, if we wanna discuss this, we need to have a motion on the table. Um, so I'm looking for a motion on resolution 5026. I make a motion to approve uh, resolution 5026. Second. Motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. And now we can enter into deliberation about this agenda item. So um, I'm just gonna ask Mr. Carter's, could you pull the map up while we're discussing just so we can have it as a reference here? I like your Google map a little bit better than, our, than the agenda packet, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Uh, commissioners, who would like to go first? Um, I don't know if you can see me with, see my hand raised, so I'm just gonna start talking this. Yeah, Commissioner Lyons, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so the, the, Ms. Weimer was mentioning that not vacating the land uh, will limit development pot potential on the land. Um, I find that only pertinent um, to the, the goals of the city as it, as it pertains to affordable housing. Um, the the fewer, fewer homes we have in Livingston, um, the quicker those prices will will continue to rise. Um, beyond that, I'm curious if any commissioners uh, have thoughts on what else the city stands to gain by by voting right now to permanently give up that right of way. So that that's just an open question to to my fellow commissioners is what what do you see that we stand to gain by, by permanently giving up the right of way today? Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. I'm gonna ask one clarifying question um, that I forgot to ask earlier about the parcel. Um, I'm not opening up to having like a big interaction outside the commission. I just wanna give one piece of clarifying information. Mr. Carters, can you remind me what this parcel is zoned? Uh, it's currently zoned R2. Thank you. Okay, Commissioners, um, Commissioner Lyons had a question for all of us as well. Um, feel free to share your own thoughts and if you wish to respond to him, 
you can respond to him as well. Commissioner Lyons, I, I agree with you that I, I hate setting the precedent that we're just giving easements away. I, I don't like to do that. Um, and so that's, that's troublesome for me. It's also troublesome for me that somehow this property was given a building permit on an easement that goes right through the building. Obviously that happened a long time ago, but um, that's that was way before us. Um, but I I do have I do have problems about the precedent of of abandoning easements um, just just in general. Thank you, Vice Chair Kale. Um, before we start taking second turns, I too, I just want to make sure all commissioners have had a chance also to speak. So, Freeman or Schwartz, do you have any comments you'd like to make? Hey, Madam Chair, um, yeah, briefly. Um, unfortunately, in this situation, you know, the kind of water's already gone under the bridge in this, and. Uh, um, somewhere along the way, way uh, paperwork got misplaced or something. Um, and uh, I know we've discussed uh, trails in this area before, most notably 9th, uh, 10th Street, right around in that area. Um, and uh, the easements that are in place for that. And this is a very, very steep property. Um, as well. Uh, I don't know, I, I'd have a hard time going, a, going against this, um, but the fact that it's already there, um, somebody approved it at some point. Um, and uh, unfortunately it is what it is. Um, I yield, madam. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Friedman, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I, I did uh, what uh, Quentin says. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Thank you. So I think I my thoughts it. are um, that we're seeing much like we have seen the last four years, um, we're seeing remnants of um, just like cleaning up the map and cleaning up the code. And this seems to sort of fall in line with some of the things that have fallen between the cracks. Um, you know, assuming good intent and just recognizing that it was a mistake that got carried forward. But also, um, I live not that far away from this part of town, and I've actually walked on this road many, many times. As you can see from this map, there's actually not a good sidewalk system. So this is a part of town where you're walking on the streets when you're walking around your neighborhood. Um, and I do think that there's a solution here. Um, I think there's a solution that could work for all parties. I would like to see like a more tangible solution to getting, helping pedestrians and people outside of cars move from that neighborhood down, um, down the hill. And I think it's probably, it's probably not the most difficult challenge that we as the commission in the city um, will have come across. So I would like to see some options before we, before I permanently agree to anything. Um, just because again, I've, I live here, I live close to this part of town, I've been there. I was happy to see Mr. Cardew's shift the map because that's what I was remembering particularly about this road is that the view is spectacular um, because you're up above. <laughs> so it is steep down and I think that there are solutions to help move people safely down the hill without having to go all the way around on the streets. Um, because if you look, if we were to zoom out, I think you have to go, how far do you have to go over Mr. Carter's to make it all the way down to the major? So you have to go all the way down over by Sun on the west or is that 7th Street? What street is the one that connects all the way to front? 8th Street. 8th Street, thank you. I always get those two mixed up on the side of the tracks. Anyway, um, 
So I would lean towards finding a solution for that, that neighborhood to move them safely as pedestrians down before we um, finalize anything about that particular property with the asterisk that I do think that there's probably a straightforward solution there to put on a future agenda. Um, yeah, so now we can go through round two if anybody else, any commissioners wanna make second comments before we um, move forward. Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, so we're gonna penalize this person for uh, um, the, the current owner or the buyer because we don't have a solution to get down off the hill besides anything closer to 8th Street when um, other properties like 9th or 10th might be more viable, less steep. Um, I don't know. I, I don't see how that's germane to this, um, to this um, property that we have before us. Um, I'm sorry if I... Um, I, I just I um, I just don't see an issue with it. Thank you. I yield. Was, and I'm not sure if that was a question for me, if you were asking me that, or if that was rhetorical. Was that rhetorical, or did you want a response to that? Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Other commissioners. Yeah, I'm sure. Yep, Commissioner Friedman. Uh, this is a question for Brooke. Brooke and I used to be uh, neighbors on the North Hill maybe 12 years ago. Um, how does she feel about what we're gonna be doing as a realtor? So, Commissioner Friedman, with all due respect, this is like the public comment part is done of the meeting. So I just want us to tread really carefully about um, opening it back up to public comment and keep it to commissioner comments right now. Brooke already gave her public comment about the agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair. I wanna give every commissioner a chance to go twice. Just a second, Quinn, Commissioner Schwartz. Okay. So, um, Kayla Lyons, do you have any additional comments you'd like to make at this time? Chair Newt. Yep, Commissioner, Vice Chair Kayla. Um, so this is uh, just so that I have my thoughts in place here. So, so this is a resolution. We're going to vote on this. Will we see this again? Will this then go to a public hearing? Can someone please remind me of the process as, as we move through this? Yeah. Mr. Cardus, can you clarify the process for this resolution, please? Yeah, I think for a vacation, this is a, oh, uh, I'd have to double check with Jim, but I think a vacation is is just one resolution. I don't think it goes to a public hearing, um, but I would have to double check on that. And then it's like, um, it's in effect immediately or is it a certain number of days after the vote? Uh, for this one, once it's approved, it, it takes effect immediately. Uh, let, me wrote, let me see real quick how Jim wrote this ordinance. Okay. And if you need a minute, Mr. Cardos, we can take, um, I know we're, we're past our normal break time. So if you, if it's helpful, we could take our five minute break while staff gets us information too, if you need some time. That would be yes. helpful just to make sure I get you the right okay. information. So let's go ahead and take a five minute break since we're about an hour and a half since that earlier five minute break. Um, and then Mr. Cardos can get the procedural information for us. So we're moving forward with all the information in our deliberation. Okay, thanks everybody. And thank you, Mr. Curtis, and thanks Faith for the timer you're gonna- Percent answer, but I wanted to check one more thing in state law before I gave you a final answer. Okay, do you want a few more minutes? About two more should be enough. Okay, we'll just let, uh, Faith, if you could put a timer up just so folks know when to come back to the screen, that would be really helpful, thank you.
I found the statute. Give me just a second. Do you have everything you need, Mr. Cardus? Yeah, I'm good. I am ready when you are. Yeah, let's just give, uh, I'm gonna see a couple more commissioners' faces before we. Okay, I think we're ready now. So let's go back to the question. Um, Vice Chair Kale was asking about process um, and adoption of, an or of the resolution and Mr. Cardus was looking at the information. So that's where we left off, Mr. Cardus. So this, the part of state code that addresses this is a little iffy. Um, it's, it's in the, the bowels of the city manager form of government section. And some of that is applicable and some of it isn't. But the way it reads is that this would be a resolution of intent, which is I think how we worded it. Um, and so you would see it at the next meeting for final approval. So is, a, is it a resolution of intent and then a resolution or an ordinance? A resolution? Yeah, it's the resolution. And so then that means it's a resolution of intent and then two weeks later, a resolution. And then if something's voted on and approved at that point, it's in effect immediately? Okay. Correct. Look at this public learning. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to look that up. Uh, Vice Chair Kaylee, you still have the floor. Thank you and uh, thanks for that information. Um, I, since we're in discussion, I, I'm just wondering if there's a way that we can, you know, abandon the easement that they're on. Obviously it's going through their building. I, I certainly don't want to hold them accountable for, for that, but reserve the right for an easement on that property at some point, or I realize that we don't know what's going to happen from here, but if they're planning for development, you know, can we ask for a right away through the new development. Um, I don't know what the options are, but if there's something, something that we can uh, work towards or negotiate negotiate with them within these moments now, might be more straightforward to get it done. So, um, we talked about process earlier. So we can vote, approve, deny or we can postpone for any reason, and we can postpone for negotiations. I don't believe that we can negotiate in a meeting without it being on the agenda. Um, I believe that that would need to be something that goes to staff and staff does the negotiations and brings us back something to vote on, um, because that would be a bit out of our lane. Uh, I would look to the city manager um, to tell me if I'm interpreting that correctly, that it would not be in our lane as a commission to be negotiating with property owners. That would be correct. That'd be something we would do as staff and bring to you. Okay. Thank you for that. So our pass forward would be approve, deny, or postpone with wanting something negotiated and come back to the next agenda, depending how quickly staff could do that. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Kale, you still have the floor. Do you have anything else you wanted to say? Um, just that whatever we decide to do, I understand that we need to move on this right away so that we're not holding things up for the, for the property owner as well. I do understand that. 
Has every commissioner had a chance to go twice now, except for me? Any other commissioners? Okay, so I'm gonna go my second time. I'm gonna say, um, I just wanna speak to something Commissioner Short said. With all due respect, I don't think that we're penalizing anyone. I think um, part of our duty is to um, serve the public's best interest. So I actually don't think it's a penalty to take time to make decisions. And I don't think any of us have suggested penalizing the property owner. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear, that intent versus impact, that I don't think anybody here is trying to punish anyone else. And we're just working for the public good. All right, any other commission deliberation? So we're going on round three now. So maybe we should try to wrap this up on round three before we move forward and everybody will get a chance. So Commissioner Lyons. So we have, um... We have a, it was moved to, to go to a vote and seconded. If, if um, let's say if my wish is for it to be postponed and worked on by staff, if it, if it weren't to pass this vote, we would, we would potentially move to postpone the vote. Is that how that's gonna work process wise? If it if we move to pass, it's over. If we move, like if we if we vote to pass and it passes, it's over. And if we vote um, and it doesn't pass, it's over. But someone could make a motion to postpone. Okay, that's my understanding of process. And I'll look to Mr. Cardos to see if I'm remembering parliamentary process correctly. So that's correct. If you wanted. If it moves forward, the motion is to pass. So it either passes or fails if you move forward. Otherwise you would have to table it to a time certain, i.e. you would have to say table it until whatever meeting you were looking, you wanted to look at it. But if we table it, can staff still work on something? That's my concern is like the postponed versus the tabling. Yeah, not really. Um, if, if it's just tabled, then it kind of has to stay where it's at. It's not an issue to be worked on. And you can't, there is no real postponement. Um, if, and that's, and that's the difficulty of trying to tie the, the vacation to an easement. They're, they're different things um, and they should be separate processes. They really shouldn't be used as leverage to do something else um, because they're not tied together as the same process. They're separate processes. Um, you can negotiate for an easement and you can give or not give a vacation, but you shouldn't base the easement or the vacation off of an easement. Because um, either the either the right of way is necessary or it's not. Um, it's not based off of whether or not there's an additional easement. Those kind of negotiations are more for um, design review or subdivision development where you're you're looking at the plan from the beginning. This is more of a straightforward question on one topic and probably shouldn't intertwine two different topics. So I, um, I believe there is an option to motion, uh, to motion to postpone. And I think part of it could be postponing to have more information about alternatives. So I guess I don't completely agree, um, but that's, I suppose, somewhat at our discretion as a commission. Uh, Commissioner Lyons, you still have the floor. I I don't know that I am entirely sure what what the answer is then to my question of um, how to proceed, but I don't have any specific clarifying questions, so I yield. Thank you. Other commissioners? Uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner Schwartz. Yes, if I could uh, direct a question to Courtney Llewellyn. Is that appropriate? Yeah, I want to be careful not to open it up to um, to like conversation. But if you do have a legal question, I think that it's appropriate. Um, well, I just want, um, what are the potentials for litigation if this doesn't pass? I mean... To be fair, I think we're always open to litigation for every vote we have, but 
um, all well, this is kind questions. of a unique. This is kind of a unique circumstance. Um, seeing how um, there's some gray area to this, um, to the the whole history of this property. That's what I'm. That's all I'm asking is. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'm just curious if that if it's not applicable. Um, just let me know. Um, I want to hear from the rest of the commissioners first before we open it up. Mostly because it seems to me that if we need more information and we need a legal memo, we can get a legal memo and we discuss it at the next meeting. I think it's important that we have all the information and that staff has time to produce the information rather than expecting them to um, give like advice on the spot. We already closed or we already paused the meeting for seven minutes so that staff could answer one question. So I, I just want staff to have time also to, to formulate responses and get us written responses and staff reports. Um, well, let, me ask, let me ask this, um, does um, um, Michael uh, Cardus have a uh, recommendation at this time on how to proceed? Madam Chair? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to hear from all the commissioners before we open it up to staff. Thank you. Freeman or Kale, do you have any other comments? No. I, I think I would like to know the options of, of what we can do at this point. Um, okay. I see, feel that feels unclear. Okay. Okay, so now, now we'll, uh, Mr. Cardus, you can respond. Thank you for your patience. Um, so I, what would I recommend at this time? I think the question uh, that I would, I guess I would try to answer is, if we were to delay this response, what information would I come back to you with? Uh, and I think that's probably the most applicable to the question you're asking. Um, in general, if I was going to give you a recommendation for alternatives, none of them would be through the 12th Street property. Uh, it's just much more difficult to hook anything up in there. Um, if you're if your intent is to be able for pedestrians or bicyclists to get from the north side to Front Street, I think by far the easiest and simplest answer to that is to use the Gallatin Street right away to the 12th Street right away. Um, that solves several of the problems and it pretty much already exists. Um, and let me share what I'm talking about, I guess. That would be useful um, if I could get back into my Zoom. There we go. Um, and then of course it disappeared. Um, but the, there we go. Let's see if that'll help me get to where I wanna see. Uh, because of the way this hill is laid out, uh, the, the areas we were looking at previously over on 9th and 10th street, the intent wasn't to just get from the top to the bottom. The intent was to use some of the city property that was there to make a, a connecting trail, more of a pleasure trail. As far as transportation goes, this right of way is by far the simplest hook to Front Street. Um, all the right of ways already exist there. The slope is already mitigated here, uh, as you can tell by the path that already exists. So if you were gonna ask me what, what I would bring back as a staff for um, different options, I don't think any of those options would go through the 12th street property. Um, the way it's laid out, the only way you would even consider it would be way over here on the edge. Um, and I think you're, you're getting into some of the construction with the other development that's already been there and it doesn't really lead anywhere um, where this is a lot cleaner. So I guess, unless you had a specific area that you wanted me to negotiate, there isn't, there isn't anything that I would look to negotiate in that area. Uh, because it just is, it would be a much more difficult connection than anywhere else. Um, as far as process goes, that, that really is up to you. You can do any of those things you wanted. Um, there's ways, whether or not there's a specific uh, motion to um, delay, you can certainly disapprove and have them reapply. You can do, you can do a lot of things. Uh, I, I guess the question is what, is, what is the intent? And if the intent is to look for a different way down, 
my recommendation would be that a, a negotiation for an easement in this property wouldn't be necessary for that, nor actually even desirable from a staff perspective. Mr. Cardus, can you do the Google Earth and grab like you did that that fancy screen grab you did where you rotated the plane up so we can see that um, that alternative you were just proposing? Thanks for your tech skills tonight, by the way, for doing this. So this path right here, you're on mute. I'm not sure if you're talking, sorry. Yeah, so if you look like this area right here would be the alternate that we're talking about. So this goes up to the Gallatin Street right away right here um, on the top of the hill. So this path kind of already exists and it's at a, a less of a slope than this area right here where the 12th Street vacation would be. Um, and same thing for the other areas on the on either side of the property. It's just not as conducive to a trail as this one would be. So um, if if we were looking for an alternative, that would be the easiest by far. It'd be quick and easy to implement um, and kind of already exists and is used, I think, as mainly a driveway in that area. Um, but that right of way still exists on cadastral. But that's already a public. The public already has access to that and can use it if we have a right of way. Is that what you're saying? It just yeah, it's not marked think, or anything, but yeah, it's not marked or anything. I think it may have been built as a driveway, but it still is in the city right of way for the Gallatin Street. Meaning that people can already use it if they want yes. to make their way up. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I'm I deeply apologize that I didn't write down who had the floor right then. Um was that, that was you were following up with the questions after all the commissioners had spoken, I believe. So does that, does that get at your um, process question, Vice Chair Kale? Yeah, I, yes, I mean, I, I think that we either approve, deny that, that we have on the, on the table or we table it and ask for more information um, seems to be our choices if, if I'm understanding correctly. So the difference between postponing and tabling is postponing is like we're gonna we're gonna talk about this more later, but tabling it means everything sort of freezes and the staff is not working on it either. So um I think that's an important distinction. And if I have it wrong, I would welcome Mr. Curtis to uh correct me. But I think that that's the important distinction about tabling. Yeah, if it's table that needs to be picked up exactly as it is. Okay, so commissioners, we've gone through three rounds. We've had lots of questions. Staff has already done some digging for us on a break. I would like to hear if anybody has any other motions or amendments they want to make and then move to a vote. Are there any other motions? Madam Chair, is there a motion out there already? Yep, there's a motion to approve resolution 5029. So we have oh, a motion okay. to approve in a second. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yep, you're welcome. It's been a while. I should have, and I should have said that. I should have. <laughs> that, was, that was a half an hour or so ago. Okay. Yeah. I got a short attention span. And I should have restated it. So thanks for the thanks for the gentle reminder. All right, I don't hear anything from the four of you. So I'm gonna to move to a vote for ask for a roll call. Roll call, please. 
Go ahead. Chair Nudes? Yes. Vice Chair Kale? Four. Commissioner Friedman? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Excuse me, Commissioner no. Schwartz? Commissioner Lyons, I got out of order. I think. Who do you want to go right now? <laughs> Let's go with shorts. Did we lose him? Did we lose you, Commissioner Schwartz? Commissioner Lane, what's your vote? No. Yeah, we lost. Quinn. Did we lose them in the office screen? No. Okay, so we still have a majority. Um, so I'm going to call it motion passes. Reminding the commission that we can bring up things in our comments, if there's things you want to bring up in our comments, but I'm going to move on to the next agenda item now. Um, let's see. So we're on action items now. First action item is discuss. Madam, approved Chair. Oh, Madam Chair. Yes, welcome back, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, computer froze. Uh, I got froze out again. That's the second time. Um, I didn't get a chance to either hear the vote or vote. I can give you the vote. I moved on, but I can give you the vote. It passed. It was um, okay. Newt's, Kale, Friedman in favor, Lyons opposed. Okay. And I'm sorry that we missed you, but it carried. And it would have right. carried. Would have carried either way with your vote. I'm, I'm ready to go in person meeting. <laughs> so we're. We're going to thank move you. to action. Yep. Yeah, thank you and welcome back. Um, we're moving to action item A discuss approved denying commissioner's appointment to serve on guiding principles strategic plan committee. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So last time, or actually a couple times ago, we appointed the citizen members of the strategic plan committee and we've been working with them to get them information. But now it is time for you as a commission to decide which two of your members will also uh, participate in that subcommittee, a uh, special subcommittee and uh, bring forward the recommendations on the strategic plan. Thank you and thank you commission. We had a small commission that night. So thanks to the three of you that were here for um, bringing this back to the full commission. Um, I wanna just remind you all that we have the strategic plan committee now and in the future we're gonna be talking about the ARPA funding. And Mr. Curtis, is that two commissioners on the ARPA funding committee as well? That's correct. Okay. So I know we're not discussing that tonight, but I would encourage you to think about our future commitments as individual commissioners as we um, determine who's going to be on the strategic plan committee. So I want to open it up to the commission and hear if any of you have preferences and you want to be on this committee. Chair Newt. Vice Chair Kill. Um, I know that we have uh, three males on this com on this committee as citizens. I think it would be nice to have uh, a mix um, of folks. So I would like to see at least one female on the on that committee as well. So I would I would offer to um, participate. Thank you for that feedback. Other commissioners? Friedman, Schwartz, or Lyons, do any of you have a preference to be on this committee or commissioners that you'd like to see on this committee? I, I don't Madam Chair. By, uh, Commissioner Schwartz, you have the floor. Um, yeah, I having done the strategic plan once already, uh, uh, I'd just soon have somebody else on it besides myself, um, fresh eyes, uh, if you will. And plus, um, um, I'm on, uh, on the URA, and that's meeting monthly now, and it's, as well as the uh, uh, Parks and Trails is meeting monthly. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for that feedback and the update on URA. I didn't know you were meeting monthly again. Um, Friedman or Lyons, I'm sorry, I think I heard one of you start to chime in, but I didn't see who it was. No, not Friedman. I'm What's that, Commissioner Friedman? I'm passing on this one. I like okay. To see, so. Okay, Commissioner Lyons. So were you gonna? It's up. It's up to me to volunteer or not. No, it's not. What I'm, what I'm... 
you and I are both, you and I are both, um, you and I can okay. both. My reason, my reason for not volunteering is is feeling like I have a lot to do, and I think I would be, um, I I would not be very. I don't think it'd be honest for me to think that I have more to do than you. So I will go ahead and volunteer um, to to be on that strategic planning committee. Um, Commissioner Lyons, I'll also be willing to volunteer to be on the strategic plan committee. I know we're going to have more meetings and we're all going to have to do a little bit extra. Um, I'm happy to do extra more now and have another commissioner do extra more later. Because we're going to have to take turns. <laughs> okay. Well, so Commissioner Lyons. If you, want to take your, if you want to take your turn now, please be my guest. Okay. Uh, so I'll go ahead and recommend that Kale and Newts are on this one, and then we'll be looking to the three of you to help step up for the next one. Um, hopefully it'll work with your schedules to have um, a different mix of commissioners on the next one. Understood, and thank you. Thank you, Chair and Vice Chair, for, for committing to that. And um, I, I'm confident you guys will, will do a great job. All right, so if that works for the commission, I'll go ahead and suggest um, that somebody make a motion for Kayla Newts, and then we'll just keep this in mind moving forward um, that we have a lot of extra meetings and we'll have to divvy them up in a way that works for the full commission moving forward. So I'm looking for a motion. Chair Newts, I'll make a motion uh, that Chair Newt and Vice Chair Kale will be the commissioners placed on the Guiding Principles Strategic Plan Committee. I'll second. And Mr. Cardus, do we need to open this up to public comment for appointment to a committee? No, this is just um, administrative for the, the commission. Okay. I don't think it requires public comment. All right, thank you. So. Um, Roll call, please. Chair Nunes? Yes. Vice Chair Kale? Yes. Commissioner Friedman? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Four. Motion carries. Action item B is to discuss a recommendation from the City Tree Board for partnership with MSU Extension Master Gardener Program to facilitate volunteer pruning of small trees and parks. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this one's a, a, a good example of, I think, how our boards do a good job of working through the commission with the staff. So this is a recommendation from the tree board. Um, so what, why it's before you tonight is just for you to say, yes, we would like the staff to investigate this, and then we will come back to you if a contract is required, or we will come back to you with the agreement that we come to if a contract's not required. Um, but either way, this is just asking you to pass it on to staff saying, yes, we agree this is a good idea and we would like you to pursue it. Thank you. And as the city commissioner on the tree board, I'll just share that this came up at a tree board meeting as an opportunity for volunteers in the community that are working to get their hours in the master gardening program to help out city staff. And one of the places where staff doesn't always have capacity and that's the small non-hazard trees, um, typically public works, it sounds like focuses their tree work and their arborist work is is more focused on hazardous tree for public health and safety reasons. So it seems like um, this could be a good partnership that complements what the city does at no cost to the city. Uh, commissioners, did you have any? I'm going to open it up for conversation now. If any of you have questions or want to comment. Chair Newt. Vice Chair Kale. I love the idea um, that we would have the opportunity to use some folks who are master gardeners to help uh, with some of this, the maintenance of our trees. Um, I know the city staff gets taxed and to have this opportunity seems like a, a wonderful idea. Do other commissioners want to chime in and support yeah. or oppose? It's fantastic news. And we just jump on it and couldn't ask for a better situation. And thank God somebody found a marriage 20 miles away and uh, 
that's that's a wonderful thing. And I congratulate anybody involved in that. Thank you, Commissioner Friedman. Um, Commissioner Schwartz, did I see your hand go up? I was just giving a thumbs up. It's a good learning okay. experience too. I mean, all the way around if, you know, volunteers come and have a master gardener, you know, show you exactly how to prune a tree properly. Um, that's, a, that's a win all the way around. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lyons, did you have anything to add? All for it. Win, win, win. All right. Looks like you have unanimous support, Michael or excuse me, Mr. Cardus, to explore a partnership with um, the city and MSU Extension. Hopefully this lightens the load for staff in 50 years when these trees are massive. Thank you very much. And we will get back to you with what, we, what becomes of the effort to cooperate with them. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, agenda item C, discuss scheduling general fund work session for city commissioners. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So staff has completed the general fund um, uh, budget recommendation for this coming fiscal year. So it is time for you as a commission to schedule the time that you would like to sit down and go over it with us. Um, Mr. Cardus, could you please, since we have a, a couple new commissioners, could you please remind us how many meetings it usually takes to work through the budget and how long those meetings are. Um, I know there's general fund and then there's other parts of the budget as well. Sure, so a lot of the process will depend on how uh, much information you like or how much you want or um, how comfortable you are through the series of meetings. So there's some wiggle room and, and how many it will take, but it's at least one for at least three hours on the, on the general fund. And then there's another night of three hours on enterprise funds and special funds. Um, and those are at least the base meetings. Then there will be regular commission meetings where they come before you for approval. Um, those usually, hopefully we've done the hard work by then and those are just the administrative um, approvals for what we've already decided on. But if anywhere in there you wanted an additional uh, budget meeting, we could absolutely accommodate that as well. But as a minimum, two, two three hour meetings and then the um, there's usually two to at least two readings of each um, in actual commission meetings. Um, I would suggest we um, start by talking about when the final vote needs to happen and work backwards so we can think about when we need to start having meetings. Can you, can you remind us when the final budget vote usually needs to happen? Sure. So there's a there's an absolute drop deadline, drop dead deadline in September. But in general, we try to at least have the first readings done prior to the start of the fiscal year, which is one July. So we usually vote on it in June, right? One of the June meetings. Okay. Yep, we try to get it on at least one of the June meetings. And then usually the final approval is in July or August. But if we can if we can get it done in June, that's preferable. It's all right if we do it in July and finish up in August. Uh, but we as we start the fiscal year, the staff really prefers to know that we have at least a mostly approved budget before we start spending money. Thank you. Okay, so I would suggest that we keep in mind that we have at least one more, well, at least two more city manager evaluation meetings. One is scheduled for April 11th. Um, and I know that's a high priority for us as a commission to finish his evaluation. Um, so I would suggest we finish his evaluation before we start the budget meetings and maybe do the budget meetings, start them in May. I'm interested in what other commissioners um, have to say about that idea. Chair Newts, can I ask a quick question? Yep. Uh, I believe Faith has sent out a doodle poll already around one of these general fund meetings. Is that correct? Because I feel like I've filled one out. Oh yeah, that's right. She did. Thank you. And that was in May, wasn't it? I think it was May. Yes. Yep. May. Okay. I don't Synchronicity. Remember. Talk about being in sync with city staff. Yeah. So that puts us right on target. So everybody did the first doodle poll, or if you haven't, I think there might be a couple commissioners that still need to do it. I'll turn to Mr. Cardus to see. Yep. We're just waiting for a couple more commissioners to finish up the polls, and then we'll see if there's a consensus. It looks like it might be hard to find a, 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 a appropriate time for everybody, but we'll wait until mm -hmm. everyone's answered. That was actually the compact meeting. 
I think it wasn't actually the city budget, was it? Uh, both of those actually have gone out. Yeah, we had okay. a doodle pull on both. Okay, well, I'm, I'm one of the commissioners that hasn't replied then because I only remembered the compact. My bad, I'll go find it. Okay. Because so I believe the, gen the general fund meetings were evening meetings, if I remember correctly. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to say? If the doodle polls went out, I don't know if there's anything else to say. Commissioners, does anybody else have anything to say or are you fine with just moving forward with the doodle polls for now? With that general timeline as a goal that Mr. Cargus laid out. Okay, I only see affirmative and I would remind new commissioners and fellow former commissioners that this book has a section on the budget. And if you have questions, you can always reach out to Mr. Cardus before the fund meeting if you have questions about what this stuff means. Um, it can be really helpful. And it, it won't replace the public, it won't replace the public meeting, but it's a good way to learn about process if you have questions about process before we move into budget meetings. And if I may, Madam Chair? Please. Um, and I will, the, you should see the draft budget from the staff uh, sometime this week. It will come with the entire line item bu budget as well as a city manager synopsis of the budget and um, Paige helps me put that out. Uh, so it'll kind of give you an overview of the budget. I tried to provide you a brief that's, that synthesizes a lot of it, but there is a lot of information. So if you have any questions, please come in. I will sit down and go through it with you as many times as possible. And when you ask me questions, I don't know, we'll go grab Paige and uh, make sure that any any questions you have, we will answer. So you'll have um, printed versions for the commissioners and then it'll be available online for the public to review as well. Uh, we, usually right? don't, we usually don't publish the draft one until the agenda. Okay, um, great. But we will let you know when we get those in your box. Um, I'll send out an email with the electronic one once we have printed them and put them in your box. Thank you. And then the draft agenda will come out, I'm sure, as soon as we get it. The meeting time scheduled, it won't be long after. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Commissioners, do you have any questions about the budget before we move on to our last two action items? This is gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time going over the budget. And I'm being serious. It's always good meetings, the budget meetings. Okay. So let's move to the last two agenda items. We have um, action item D, discuss approved deny city county airport board and commission guidance, comma, involvement. Mr. Carters. Uh, thank you, Madam Jairus. Uh, so this is an issue that you have asked for a little more information on as we move forward. We've had some conversations about the airport board, um, how it's set up and how uh, the the city commission and the city staff interact with it. So I'll just give you a little more background to kind of, I think, wrap up what we've already talked about. And then um, really the question is, how do you as a commission wanna move forward? I'll give you my recommendation as I turn it over. Um, but most of the, of the joint airport board um, administration is either dictated by state law for a joint airport board, or it's dictated by the joint resolution that the city and the county passed. Um, I will tell you there's some problems with that and we need to we do need to do some updating. Um, one of the things that is has not been done correctly is the airport board should have created their own bylaws. And while we have some guidance that reads kind of like bylaws, they have not um, made their own bylaws. So that's something that needs to be cleaned up. Um, but before we put a lot of effort into that, my recommendation would be to get the compact done with the county and then rewrite the joint resolution as a chapter of that compact. Um, and then we can um, very clearly state the overall guidance of both commissions um, before the airport board then goes on to write their own bylaws because that's that's how the process should work. You, you and the county commission together in the joint resolution should set your guidance and your vision for how the airport board should work. And then they should write their bylaws underneath of that. And those bylaws should come back to both commissions for approval. And then once approved, those would be the guidance for them moving forward. So I think there's some things we can clarify in the joint resolution, um, that being one of them. Uh, but as it is written right now, the airport board actually has some pretty expansive authority. 
uh, and that is allowed under state law. Everything is good as far as that goes. Um, the composition of the board is laid out in the joint resolution, and it is five members, two appointed by the city commission, two appointed by the county commission, and one voted in at, from the other four members. So there is no, um, there's no room for a commissioner to actually be on the airport board as it is currently written. That can certainly change as you rewrite the joint resolution, but as currently written, the five members are not commissioners from either commission. They are citizens appointed by those commissions. Um, that being said, practically, um, Commissioner Tinsley from the county sits in on those meetings, but he is not a voting member. Uh, so he does not vote on issues. Um, and that is why a lot, of the, a lot of the things that you would think come before you do not, uh, because the, the board itself actually has uh, the authority, and I'm going to read what the joint resolution says, they have jurisdiction over the planning, acquiring, establishment, development, construction, enlargement, improvement, maintenance, equipment, operation, regulation, protecting, protection, and policing of joint airports or landing fields. Uh, so that is what's within their authority right now. Um, so that being said, most of the things they do will not come before either commission. Some things come before the county commission because they are the arm that actually executes the stuff as far as they hold the money for the airport, they cut the checks when the airport does certain things. So some of the administrative stuff does come before the county commission just because they're the ones that are uh, managing that board as far as the joint board goes. Um, and so they will see some things you won't see. But in general, unless there's a, a federal requirement from the FAA for the governing bodies to sign something, those are about the only things that will come in front of the governing bodies, either city commission or county commission for approval. Um, the other items that would would be the bylaws, if they created them, those would have to come before you. And the budget has to come before you every year. So you'll see the airport budget in the budget we do. Again, the airport board develops that budget, the county helps them with that process, and then it just comes before you for information. Um, and there are some there are some limits on how much money they can spend without coming before the different governing bodies. But in general, they have some pretty broad authorities. So my recommendation would be to do just that, would be to finish the county compact and then put this on the list of, of chapters that we wanted to address probably sooner rather than later. Uh, and then once that is done, turn it over to the airport board themselves for um, to develop the, the bylaws and to get those approved through the different governing bodies. So that is just a quick synopsis of what we've kind of been talking about and where we're kind of standing. I think there is some confusion even among the airport board on what needs to come in front of the commissions and what doesn't. Um, and I will try and work with the city members and try to give them some information on that so they're so they're comfortable too with what, what is happening. But other than that, um, I will stand by for questions. Um, I have a, I'm going to start off with a question. Mr. Curtis, um, so when you're talking about who administers funds and does the administrative part of the board, is that is that in the resolution then or in the compact that spells that out? I don't think it actually is. Um, I think that's just kind of how it's defaulted. Uh, my guess is, I don't know if we flipped a coin for the library board versus the airport board, uh, but the city does the, those administrative functions for the library board and the county does those functions for the airport board. And then um, for the compact, do you have a guesstimate of when, like the timeline? Not not exact, clearly, because it's a very large document with many, many chapters, but do you have some expectation of when we might be working on that chapter in the compact? Um, it'll depend a lot on when we do that first, what I call chapter zero of the compact or the compact actual. And I, you do have the doodle poll for that. So we are we are actively trying to schedule that right now. Um, once that's done, I will probably bring you a list of chapters and ask you as a commission what you'd like to prioritize. So it'll depend on where you prioritize it in that list of chapters. But it's going to be a very long process. The whole compact will probably take quite some time. The whole compact is probably going to take between, uh, it would probably take up to a year to get all of the chapters written. I've I've tried to pre-write some of them so the, that the staff work is done, uh, but some of them are going to re require some, I think, uh, so a lot of thought as far as the philosophy behind how we want to do things as we share authorities and responsibilities with the county. 
Thank you. Um, other commissioners, do you have questions? Chair sure, Newt. Yeah, Vice Chair Kale. The question about as we work through the chapters and work on them and approve them, are they not officially approved and in working order until we approve the entire compact? Yeah, Mr. So, Burns. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I will correct myself. I have it open and it does actually, it does actually assign the um, the treasurer of Park County to be the sole custodian of the joint airport fund. So it is in the joint resolution that they mm -hmm. will take care of the money. Um, as far as when it's effective, the the most important part is that first uh, chapter zero or whatever that that sets the fact that you can have chapters. And after once that is passed, each chapter is individual and standalone. So as soon as that chapter is passed, it is effective and it is um, and will remain effective as as stated inside itself as far as how long it lasts. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I I guess I have a comment too, and I don't know if this is the time for that. Um, but I, I think that we need to definitely tighten up that chapter around the airport board. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion. I think that there's things going before the county commission that perhaps shouldn't, if we're not seeing it, they shouldn't be seeing it either. And it doesn't have to do with dollars and cents. Um, so I think this is like of the utmost importance that we, this comes before us as soon as possible and, and we get working on it. Thank you, Vice Chair Kale. Other commissioners? Did we lose Schwartz again? Is he still here? You might have I lost him too. again. Okay. I'm, I, I'm here. I just keep getting freezing. I'm just going without the video, see if I can hang in there. Okay. I just want to make sure you get a, a chance to chime in too. Yeah, no, things. thanks. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with um. Commissioner Kale, yeah. Um, and that's nice to know we can work chapter by chapter and improve in that way. Um, that's what I was hoping we could do as it is. Okay, thank you. I yield. Thank you. And then um, Friedman and Lyons, do you do either one of you have comments you'd like to make? No, the only comment I have is I'm consoling my wife today because she's a Tar Heel in North Carolina, lost by three points last night. So that's a uh, that's the big news here. Fantastic ball. If anybody's involved with basketball, it was quite a deal. They did beat Duke, which is great. So I, I yield. Commissioner Freeman, you know I did my postdoc at UNC. All right, guys, let's stay on topic. Let's talk about the airport process here. Um, That's done. Do you, Commissioner Lyons, did you have anything you would add? No. I so I'll say I think that the process that the city manager has laid out makes a lot of sense. I like starting big and narrow and narrowing in, starting with the compact chapter and then honing in towards uh, an updated joint resolution. So I think that's a good process um, that he's laid out for us. We I think that this is administrative. We don't need to open it to public comment. Is that right, Mr. Carters? Okay, but we still need a motion and we need to vote. So. Does anybody want to make a motion about um, the process as it's been laid out by Mr. Carter's? I'll make a motion to approve. Action I am deep. I'll second. Is that enough for you, Mr. Carter's? Is that specific enough? Or do you need us to be more specific with? Yeah. No, as long as as long as your intent is that I continue to work it through the county compact process, that's enough for me. I would say that that I would interpret that that's the intent. I'm looking to other commissioners to disagree with me. If they all right, so everybody's in agreement. It looks like. Um. So, motion by Short, second by Kale. Roll call, please. Chair Newt. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Commissioner Freeman. Yes. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Our last agenda item is action item E tonight. 
is to discuss notice from NMIA regarding discontinuation of insurance coverage for Livingston City County Library. Mr. Carters. Thank you, Madam Chair. So you'll note that this item is discussed only. Um, I don't think I'm ready to give you a recommendation on what to do at this point. And I don't think the, it's required that the commission act at this point, but we did want to get it into a meeting so that you were notified of what the issue is and can start thinking about how we'd like to move forward to it. Um, on just uh, last week, we received a memo from MMIA. Um, if you're not familiar, that's the Montana Municipal Interlocal Authority. They are our risk pool. Most people would call them our insurance company. Um, they don't like that though. So we call them our risk pool. Uh, but they do our liability insurance, our property insurance. Um, we go, our health insurance goes through MMIA uh, and they are specific for the cities in Montana. Uh, they sent us a notice that they will no longer cover library employees um, unless a very specific set of um, requirements are met. So we talked a little earlier that the city does the administrative um, work for the library board. Uh, it is technically, we technically have a city county library that is funded both through voted mill levies and um, standard mill levies that the city and the county put forward. Uh, but the employees per state law um, work for the library board. So they are considered city employees as far as insurance and health insurance goes, but as far as hiring, firing and discipline, um, the library director is, um, is hired and fired directly by the board and then all the other employees are under the library director. Uh, so MMIA has decided that is too much of a risk for them as they are ensuring employees that are not actually under the authority of the cities that they are, are there to ensure. So they have given, um, they've given cities, which is an interesting way to do it, but they've given cities until May 16th to indicate whether or not that they would like to meet the underwriting criteria and continue to carry insurance on library employees. Um, while, the, while the notice goes to cities and the cities have to respond, um, I think in all honesty, this decision is really the library board's decision uh, because I will read you the criteria that the uh, library employees must meet to be, in, uh, to be insured through MMIA. So they must be employees of the city or town uh, they must adopt and adhere to the city and or town personnel policies. Um, they must allow input and authority by the city and town for personnel decisions, such as hiring, termination, discipline, grievances, ADA, harassment prevention and safety, and the agreement, there must be an agreement between the city and town and library that incorporates all of the items above. Um, so that fundamentally changes the relationship between the library and the city. Um, the library is fairly independent at this point. Uh, While well, they have adopted the, the city employee manual and we provide um, payroll and HR services to them, um, the exception of the, of the um, personnel policies are that they do not fall under the authority of the city manager. Uh, so this memorandum would, would require that to change. And while the library board would still have authority over their budget um, and they would still have input into personnel items, it basically shifts most of the responsibility and most of the authority to the city and away from the library board. Um, so that's a significant change in how things operate. Uh, it's a May 16th deadline to do, give a notice of intent if we plan to ask for the library to be insured under those conditions. And if not, um, coverage effectively ends for the library on July 1st. So they are on a very tight timeline as far as their um, their ability to find, uh, I guess, alternate arrangements if they wish. Now they certainly can, as a library board, decide they do not want to use the city and they can go out on their own for any kind of insurance they wish. They have the authority to hire and fire employees. Uh, they could hire an accounting firm instead of the city to do payroll. Uh, they could become completely independent and and divorce themselves from the city as well. And that is an option that they have, uh, option they have before them. So they are gonna have some significant decisions to make over the next couple of weeks. Um, I guess they have almost a month, a little over a month to decide. Uh, we will put this on our first meeting in May. So it won't be on the next meeting, but it will be on the, the following meeting. Um, as far as whether or not we are going to send a notice to MMIA that we intend to 
ensure the library employees or not. So in the meantime, um, obviously we've sent this notice on to the library. Uh, the library board will work through it on their end. I think the state library service is working through it as well and trying to determine if there's a, a, a different solution that they can negotiate with MMIA. So all that will be going on in the meantime and I will try and bring all that information to you and send you updates in the meantime if we learn anything. Uh, but I just wanted to put that, that issue out there for you so that you had the information, you knew what was coming. Um, again, I would suspect that we will uh, in large part go with what the library board uh, would like to do, but that really is, I guess, if they wish to continue with the city and we agree that we're willing to accept that risk also, then we could go along with them. You do as a commission, even if they want to continue, you have the authority or the right to say, no, we don't, we are not willing to take that risk and we do not want you under us um, on our insurance. So that will be, that will really be the question put before you is if they don't want it, I think it's a fairly easy going, fairly easy decision going ahead, then we don't need to worry about it. If they do want it, then the decision for you is, are we willing to take that additional responsibility, additional staff commitment and additional risk um, as we move forward into the new year? So I'm happy to answer any questions on that, but there, I, we do have limited information at this time, but I, I'll be happy to tell you everything we do know. Thank you. I'm gonna start right off by disclosing that my husband's the library director, so I won't be commenting on this, but um, commissioners, I would welcome you if you, if you have any comments or questions, um, just let me know and you can have the floor. Commissioner Lyons. Um, I appreciate the, the synthesis there, Mr. Cardos. I'm, um, if I am understanding correctly, it sounds like one of the one of the options that um, the library board could consider is becoming more wrapped into the city, and in that in that option, the library employees would be under your direction is that is that correct is that a correct um summary of of one of the options that you described there so i i will say that's most likely um what they're referring to there's still some debate about what what that means the first line says library staff must be employees of the city and town and yes that would imply that they would fall under the city managers as all employees of the city and town do but there's another line that says um, it must allow input and authority by the city and town for personnel decisions um, and obviously there's a big difference between input and authority um, if it's both of those, then I would say, yes, that's still the case. Everybody falls under the authority of the city manager. Um, and that kind of model, the library director would, would end up being like a department head. It would be a new department of the city. Um, but there might be some middle ground where they have a little more independence. And I think that's what the state library is trying to work out with MMIA at this point. Um, but if you go just by what it says right now, yes, the, the library would, all the employees would come under the direction of the city manager. Okay, thanks for that clarification. So um, with all that being said, what do you feel is your capacity and or the city's capacity to absorb a new department? So that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, in some ways, it won't be a huge lift for the city because we already do many of the functions. Um, we already do payroll, we already do HR. Uh, so, um, those shouldn't add a lot of uh, administrative burden to the city. Uh, the real question is, um, as we added as a department, how does that flow? Probably mainly for me would be where the most additional administration would be. Um, I don't think that would be significant, um, I, but that's, I think that might be specific to my management style. I give a lot of a lot of leeway to my department heads to run their departments as they will, which um, allows them to be more creative and lessens the burden for me. Um, if you're not micromanaging, you have time to do other stuff. Uh, so I think the city could absorb it as an additional department without a significant loss of capacity. Great. At Thank an you. initial blush. 
Thanks for that. Thank you. Other you commissioners? Good? Thanks. Thanks, Commissioner Lyons. Do other commissioners have questions or comments? Chair Newt. Yeah, Vice Chair Kiel. I think Tori asks uh, my question. So, this, so thank you, Tori. And, and I do think it's really important to just wait and hear what the library board decision is and, and how they would like to move forward. So we'll be, be curious and, and waiting to hear um, th their decision as well. Thank you. Other commissioners, does anyone else? Um, Friedman or Schwartz, do either of you want to comment? Yeah, well, I'm on, uh, that's one of my assignments is the library board, but I know most of the people over there, so. I'll dive in and see what uh, what I get back. And uh, I've always associated kind of the city with the library and that we do some things. So uh, it's an important area of our community and I think we've come up with the best decision. So hopefully whatever there is, we'll be able to work it out. And uh, it's, it's a big part of the community. So that's, that would be my wish. Everybody's satisfied. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lyon, or no, I'm sorry, Commissioner Schwartz, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, thank you. Okay. All right. So I think there's nothing else to say on that. You don't need any, you don't need any feedback from us. Is that right, Mr. Carter? So just carry on. That's correct. I'm, we're really just waiting to see how the library works through it. And I'll try and get you some more information as as far as if there's any additional costs to the city. Um, but I, I'm assuming we can use that the library fund will still cover most of the cost of the, the library employees. So if there's any change to that, I will let you know. Uh, but we're continuing to track it with the state uh, and with MMIA and with the library also. So we will, we will keep apprised of how it's going and we will give you any updates as they come. Thank you. All right, so we'll move to our comment portion of the evening. And we'll start with city manager comments. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So I will just give a couple of short plugs and let you move on. Uh, if you didn't see the newspaper today, please give the front page a check out. Um, it's showing some of the new capability we have in our ambulances and with our, our paramedics. Um, pretty much the only EMS service in the state that has this capability right now. So it's just another example of where we are exceeding uh, what people would expect out of a town our size. And I'm uh, super happy that we are able to do that. So give that a read. The paper did a good job of covering it. Um, additionally, just another plug that if you are listening tonight and you want to be on a city board, there are several openings. Uh, those are advertised on our webpage. So if you'd like to be involved, please reach out and we will let you know what's out there and help you uh, through the application process if you are interested. And other than that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you. Next up is Commissioner Lyons. I, I don't have anything. Uh, thank you all for uh, engaging discussion this evening. Thanks to the public for attending and, and enriching the engaging discussion. Uh, I, I know that I appreciate it and I think the whole commission appreciates a, uh, an engaged constituency because um, we work for you and we want to hear from you. So thanks everyone. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Next up is Commissioner Schwartz. Um, it's been long enough. I have nothing um, <laughs> we're sharing. <laughs> Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Friedman. Yeah, I feel the same way. Good meeting. We've got uh, some pretty hot topics to think about and uh, We've got a good group to think it through. So looking forward uh, to that. So I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Friedman. Vice Chair Kale. Uh, I have nothing this evening. Thank you for a wonderful meeting. Thank you. I, uh, thank you to Michael, uh, I mean, Mr. Cardus for sharing the board assignments. There are, there's a lovely Facebook post with a nice chart that lays out um, the openings. In addition, I believe the Facebook page, the City of Livingston Facebook page is listing 
a lot of job vacancies right now too. So there's some good opportunities to be involved in local government. And I just wanted to highlight um, a couple things that came up tonight that I'll put I'll be putting on my commissioner list, my personal commissioner list for us to hopefully discuss in the future. One was the path on the north side, the um, alternate plan that Mr. Cardus offered this evening. It'd be great to see if there's a way to mark that public right of way and give people another access point to safely come down off the north side. Um, I also wanted to highlight something from a staff report um, in one of the ordinance tonight that uh, where Matthew clarified that the city has no water course or riparian setbacks or protections. So that might be a policy that the commission might want to entertain in the future is thinking about uh, extra layer of protections near the Yellowstone River, which I believe the growth policy would also support a conversation like that. So I just wanted to put that on there. Otherwise, thank you so much staff tonight for the scurrying you did on that break to help get us solid answers to our questions before we voted. I really appreciate it. I know it's hard when we put you on the spot like that. And I appreciate that you were able to round up some information for us on the fly. Um, super helpful, so thank you. Otherwise, thank you commissioners for a nice balanced discussion. I appreciate that you're all speaking up and speaking out during these meetings. That's all I have. So. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor, say aye. 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 This meeting of Livingston City Commission on April 5th, 2022 is adjourned at 8.31 p.m. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.